Welcome back, everybody. Um, so we'll deal with the second major series of issues dealing with uh, claims for SRNED in the medical profession. Now, as many of you noticed, the uh, doctors have been able to be incorporated for only a couple years now, what, about 2008, 2009, they started to be able to open their medical corporations, and, and as a result, they started claiming SRNED. So um, here we are, maybe six, seven years later, and the CRA started to say informally and semi-formally, maybe doctors should not be out allowed to claim SRNED. I don't know, this, this is what I'm being told. Um, <clears throat> or, or hearing from, from different people in the, S, uh, in the uh, CRA. So we'll talk about some different things here. We'll talk about really an overview of the issue, uh, what they're saying. And then we'll, we'll look at some specific statements. So letters that the CRA wrote to doctors. Because most, most of this is actually what I call hearsay. That they'll go out to a review or a first time claimant service. And they'll say something like, oh, and by the way, just telling you doctors may not be able to claim as of next year. And of course, the client calls me back and says, what are they talking about? I'll say, I have no idea. And they'll say, but I, I thought you're the expert. I'll say, I, I thought I was too, but I'm, I'm apparently the last of all. They, they tell the client first, and then the advisors, and then I call Ottawa, and Ottawa says, we don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, I call CADA, and they say, we don't know what you're talking about. Let me call Ottawa, who confirms they don't know what I'm talking about. And three days later, they call back and say, now we know what you're talking about, and we're dealing with it. So as of right now, Ottawa is dealing with the issues that we're about to discuss. Um, and I find that concerning. So let, anyways, let's take a look. All right, so many physicians across Canada are paid with something called a APP or AFP, Alternate Funding or Alternate, alternate Payment Plan. And basically what this is intended to do, and we'll talk about exactly what it's intended to do. We'll take some of the Ontario government legislation or pronouncements or what they say on their website about what the overall scheme is for this and what part research plays in, in the overall AFP funding, which I would argue is uh, insignificant, if, if any. Okay? So they say that AFPs are paid more for specialists where the time per patient is not predictable so that they can spend more time on patients that need it. Right? So you have a general practitioner where they basically say, look, you, you got 15 minutes to do this, and if it takes longer, well, you don't, you're not getting paid. If you knew it faster, bonus for you. Okay, so, so basically, they still get their OHIP payments, and then they get these additional alternate funding or alternate payments to represent the fact that they probably have to do stuff that a regular practitioner wouldn't, and they gotta get paid somehow. Okay? Um, so it's usually a fixed payment that says 20 to 40%, depending on the, and each of these plans is completely different. Uh, we'll talk about how different they can be. Usually, on average, 20 to 40% for administration, teaching, and research. Okay? So, arguably, research might be one component of, of that. Okay? One of the problems is, and we'll talk about this later, is that the hospitals are not willing often to provide to the researchers, to the doctors, how much that is. You know? So if they go to the VP finance of, of X hospital or X university and say, out of the AFP funding, can you tell me how much was related to my research projects? The answer is no, we can't, we can't tell you that. Uh, and that's a, that's a huge problem. Um, and we'll talk about that a little more. Um, I, I mean, it's, I think it's actually a legal problem for the hospitals because when I read their agreements, and we'll talk about this, it says, thou shalt tell every single doctor who's a member of this group exactly how much money is going for research and which projects it is every year. Uh, and I look at the agreement and I say that, and they say, yeah, but we never do it. So, so again, <clears throat> I think uh, hospitals are actually contributing to the problem. Okay, so the issue is CRA suggesting that any, any, any APP or AFP should be SRNED assistance, right? So if they say, well, we're giving you 25% of your, your, your overall earnings to your medical corporation as an AFP, and it's meant to be for admin, teaching, and research. The question is, well, how much is just for the research? Is it, is it nothing? Is it part of it, which it sounds like, or is it the full 25? So this is where there becomes a, a question of reasonableness. So what they say is, we'll go to the Income Tax Act, government assistance. So I don't quote the section number there, but I believe it's um, probably in 
127 or, or 248.1, it'll say it's assistance from a government, municipality, or other public authority, grant, forgivable loan, subsidy, or any other form of assistance. Okay, so they're going in general. However, there is a link that it has to be tied to the SRNED. Okay, so when they talk about assistance or assistance receivable, it's got to be reasonably considered in respect of the SRNED. This is what the Act says. So the Act says if you get assistance and you can say it's related, reasonably say it's related to the SRNED, then yes, that's assistance that reduces your SRNED, which, which is fair. That's what the law intended. So, so that's what the law says. Now, the CRA has these pronouncements or policy papers where they interpret what the law really means or how they're going to apply the law. And of their assistance and contract policy paper, section 4.3.2, so that was published in December 2012, it says, quote, qualified shred expenditures are reduced by any assistance that can reasonably be considered to be inspected of the SRND. Then goes on to say, assistance and contract payments in respect of non-qualifying expenditures relating to the SRND will also reduce the qualified SRND where the agreement does not distinguish payments. So they're saying even though out of this 25%, only 1% is really realistically R&D, if you can't break it down, it's all 25. Okay? And that's reasonable to them. So it's basically it. They're saying, if you can't break it down, it's all in. And if your hospital won't tell you, because it's so small, they don't even think it exists, but they can't break it down, then all of your AFP payments are coming out. It actually gets worse than this when you see some of the letters that I've actually got. It's, it's going beyond that. 